Darcy went off to school, all right, I take it. Well, she went. Whether she was all right or not. She didn't want to go, then. She didn't want to go. She didn't want to stay here. She's that upset, she doesn't know where to put herself. It's a terrible thing, her parents splitting up at her age. Not that there's a good age for it. It's not my fault me and Ken have finished. No, I wasn't saying that. I mean, what was I supposed to do? Just put up with it and keep my mouth shut? Let him have his bit on the side? No. That's what he wanted, you know. He'd have been quite happy to go on living here, using this place for eating and sleeping and her for the rest. I wasn't blaming you, Deirdre, really. Yeah, there's plenty round here who will, I dare say. At least Tracy doesn't anyway. At least she knows whose fault it is. Mm. What does that mean? Nothing. Well, children are unpredictable, aren't they? Yes, she blames Ken now, but, well, in a few years' time, she could persuade herself it was all your fault. It happens. Children have all their battles with the parent they stay with, the one who walks away. Well, what are you saying, Emily? Are you saying, have Ken back, go begging him to come home because it's not on? He wouldn't come back anyway, even if I'd have him, which I won't. I know how much Tracy's suffering. Do you think I like it? Of course I don't. I'll tell you this. She's not going to go short of anything if I can help it. I am not letting Ken get away on the cheap. He can walk away, but he is not leaving us on the breadline. I hope this isn't going to turn into a dreadful battle. If you can, try to avoid that, Deirdre. Because you're the ones who will suffer the most. You and Tracy. Shouldn't we be getting down to the office? Yeah, I suppose so. Uh, doesn't seem much point there. Oh, come on, Ken. That's not like you. If we let the recorder go down the pan, who's that going to help? Look, I understand how you feel. I know you didn't sleep much last night. You're bound to be upset, but that's what Deirdre wants. It's her way of getting back at you. No, it wasn't Deirdre. It was Tracy. Didn't even want to talk to me. Just wanted me to get out of the house. Hurt. Well, surely that's down to Deirdre. She's doing her best to turn Tracy against you. No, I don't think so. That's not Deirdre's style. Well, maybe not in the normal run of things, but things aren't normal right now, are they? Deirdre's lashing out at you and she's using Tracy as a weapon. But give her time and I'm sure Tracy will see things differently. I hope you're right. This trouble with Tracy, that's all that's worrying you, isn't it? Isn't that enough? Well, I was just wondering if there's anything else. Such as what? I don't know. Well, is there anything else you want to tell me? I don't think you're quite right. It's no good sitting here moping. Come on, let's get down to the office and start getting the paper out. Right. Are we fit? We don't want to be the last ones to get there, you know. What do you think? Hey, I tell you what, when I was Sandra Clock's you shall realise her dad's not short of a bob or two. But do I look okay? Okay. You look magnificent. Aye, well, sometimes you say something that reminds me why the hell I agreed to marry you in the first place. Do you know, I think we might just enjoy this little soiree after all. <laughs> I'll just nip and get the present. It's a bit of police, see you. Hey, I'll a drink. Please well, raise it. I'm my as like driving. I haven't got a flaming car to drive it. I've got it back, yeah. Go on, then. You might as well have one, haven't you? Go on, I'll have half of you. Go on. Half a bit of police. Right. You know why the police are keeping it, don't you? No. They still think I was driving it. They think it was me knocked down that cyclist. No, mate, it's the police, isn't it? They always take the time. They'll call them plug for nothing, do they? Well, they're treating me like suspect number one, I'll tell you that. Right, come on, we're off. Hey, you look a million dollars. Yeah, well, I dare say it's cost me somewhat approaching that over the years. Still, it's well worth it. Now, we won't be long, Jack. 
Uh, we should be back in plenty of time for opening this evening. Uh, yeah, yeah, but they, they might want us to stop on a bit late, you know, so uh, if they do, you two can go, can't you? Oh, of course we can. You, you go and enjoy yourself. Yeah. Right, thank you. Go on. Hey. It's all right for some in it. Day out mingling with your posh relations. Oh, it's all right if you've got some. Aye. Nearest we ever had to a posh relation was my uncle Cedric. He used to go in the backyard to break wind. Swore it was the test of a gentleman, you know. How sweet. Got another drink, love it? No, no. Uh, could you could you do me a favour? Uh, if uh, if a man about town on the elderly side called Mike Baldwin comes in, uh, would you tell him I got tired of waiting? Yeah. I heard the news. I thought I'd better come and have a word. Look, my card. Can I come in? Now look, Audrey, it's important, is this? There's an art to freezer stacking. An art to freezer stacking? Yes. <laughs> Do you know what he's talking about, Salah? Yeah, I think so. No. Well, I'm glad somebody does. As far as I'm concerned, it comes very low down on my list of things that are important. Well, anyway, the thing is, when we get a batch of frozen stuff delivered, and I'm out for whatever reason, we don't just chuck it in the cabinet, do we? Yeah, if you look. Ah, no, look. Supposing it is a black forest gatto. What we have to do is, we have to lift the black forest gatto that we have in stock up from the bottom and... And you bring it up to the top. Exactly. Right. And that way we don't get lumbered with a load of stuff that's gone past its sell-by date. Mm, there ought to be a law, in my opinion. Fellas ought to have their sell-by date tattooed on their heads where we could all see it. Oh, my oh. Am I glad to see someone who doesn't want to talk about frozen food? I might just as well talk to myself. Oh, I was listening, Mr. Roberts. Honestly, I was. Well, what can I say? Don't say anything. In fact, I'd sooner you didn't. I've got to, because the minute I heard it, it took me straight back. You know what I'm talking about? No, I'd sooner you just left it. All right, but just tell me one thing. You and Ken splitting up. Has it got anything to do with what happened? You know, between you and me? No, no. It's got absolutely nothing to do with that. Ken's got a girlfriend. Yeah, I know. Listen, I'll be honest, I couldn't give a damn what happens to Ken. I always thought you were wasted on him anyway. But I'm genuinely a concern that you're hurt. If I can do anything, I will. No strings, nothing up your sleeve. If you want anything, just say, OK? Sort of things I might need, you might not be able to give me. I doubt if anybody could. Just bear it in mind, all right? There was one other thing I wanted to say. Well, it's a bit of advice, really. Uh, get yourself a good solicitor. Now, I know no, a bloke... No, it's all right. I've already got somebody. Oh, have you? Because uh, when Ken finds out that leaving home costs money, he'll... Uh... Oh, this, this girlfriend, uh, has she got any? No, I don't think so. No, in fact, I'm sure she hasn't. Yeah. Well, when he finds that running two homes costs a bomb, he'll try and economise. On you and Tracy, if you let him. I don't think Ken would do that. Well, you didn't think he'd ever shack up with another woman. And he has. What about that lot, then, eh? I tell you, no change out of half a million, not round here. You can see Oddly Edge from the back garden. Yes, yeah, you told me. Right, well, uh, come on, then. You're, uh... You're not nervous, are you? Why should I be nervous? Oh, no, no, no reason, no reason. On the other hand, you don't want to be too relaxed, you know. They are, I mean, they're nice people. I'm, I'm sure they'll like you. Well, with a bit of luck, I might like them. Ooh, what? Hell fire. What's the matter? I trapped the heel in my shoe. Gordon Bennett, I thought I'd broke the flaming thing for Watch a minute. where you're walking, can't you? Hey, language. Think on, don't start. All right, all right. Stop hey, nagging. Hang on, hang on. Tim! Alex! Glad you could make it. <laughs> and this must be uh, Mrs. Alex. Uh, yes, that's correct. <laughs> uh, bet this is Tim. I'll stand for something. Pleased to meet you. Oh, come on in. Yeah. Uh, what's all this? Oh, it's just a little something for the birthday girl. Oh, little? Well, you didn't bring anything big. Ah. Sorry about the noise. We've got all age groups here. Oh. This is Victoria's one. Having a fit of the bar. Oh, yes. They sound like they're enjoying themselves. Oh, come on in. There's plenty to eat and drink. Oh. I'll drink warm you up. We don't stand on ceremony in this house. I, I won't introduce you all round. The people will soon tell you who they are. Get in all that. Uh, thank you. And you're not shy anyway, are you, Alex? Me? Oh, no, no, no. Ah, no, no. Here's somebody you should meet. Local picker. Um, Andrew? Andrew? 
this is uh, Santa's father, Alex uh, uh, Gilroy, and uh, his lady, is Andrew and Marion Crack. Oh, lovely to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you something to drink. Yeah. Oh, Victoria, here's your grandfather. Ah, oh, Victoria. Uh, Vicky, I've brought your grandma to meet you. Well, your step-grandma, really. Hello. Hello, love. Where's your mother got to? I don't know. She was here a minute ago. Oh, well, I've got a little present of a card for her here. I'll just, uh, I'll just put them down. Well, she can't be far away. I'll get you that drink. Victoria, oh, why don't you get your grandpa and Bet something to eat? Hey. A word, sunshine. Oh. Don't describe me as anybody's grandma, okay? Or a step grandma, all right? Why not? Just don't. Hey. And your son in law keeps calling you Alex. Well, that's all right. It's nearly right. Nearly right is not good enough, as he will find out if he tries to call me Bert. Now, look, don't stop. I don't oh. care whose son in law he is. <laughs> Sam sandwiches. Uh, oh, <laughs> lovely. Isn't this nice? Lovely. <laughs> On the groaning platter. <laughs> Come on, Sandra, he's your father. You invited him, you talked to him. I didn't want him here in the first place. wife oh god i think she heard us i couldn't care less whether she did or she didn't okay i'm not asking you to do it for him do it for me or for vicky or for your guests but let's not have a scene hey up fuzzy's in ah mr brennan i hope to find you in here I'll just come to tell you that as soon as you like, you can come and collect your vehicle. Oh, well, that's good, isn't it, son? I mean, it's his livelihood. He can't work without a car. Well, you've had it long enough. Have you got anywhere with them two lads, the pair that stole it? No, no, we haven't. All we've got is what you told us. So what I'd like to ask you is, now you've had time to think, is, uh, is there anything else you'd like to tell us? I've told you what happened. I've told you everything. You think it was me, don't you? You think I knocked down that cyclist and I'm just making it up about the cat? We have to investigate every possibility, Mr. Brennan. It's our job. He's right, Tom. He's got a job to do. He's just saying he thinks it was me. He didn't say that. He was good as. Well, why don't you get out after that lad, the one I described in the Green Anorak? <sighs> well, I won't keep you any longer. Oh, um, one thing, though. You'll be relieved to hear that the cyclist's out of danger. Oh, that is good. Yeah. I'm relieved to hear, you see? He thinks I've got him on my conscience. Well, pleased to hear, then, if it makes you feel any better. Afternoon, Mrs. Brennan. Did you have to go picking him up on every little bit he said for? Because he thinks I'm an merchant and a flaming liar. That's why. <laughs> yes. I'll, uh, I'll bet I'm right in saying that uh, you and your good lady don't get round the pubs much. <laughs> More than your job's worth, I suppose, in your game. <laughs> yes, well, assuming you're not uh, great pub frequenters, you'll not know the rumours return, will you? No, no, it's Weatherfield, actually. It's the, the old quarter of the town. Yes, it's quite uh, quite oldy worldy around us, you know. <laughs> the wife will tell you. I can just picture it. Log beams. Yeah. An ingle nut. Uh -huh. Log fires. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, that's uh, yes. That's the feeling that we like to feel that we. Uh... Ah, the birthday girl. Here she is. <laughs> ah, this is my little girl that I've told you so much about, Sandra. This is Bet, your step, uh, my my wife. Hello. I'm pleased to meet you. Uh, sorry I wasn't here to meet you when you arrived. A headache. Yeah, well, you'll have been overdoing it, you know, all the work preparing for this do. <laughs> you want to go and lie down, you know, until oh. you're feeling a bit better. No, though. no, I'm fine now, thanks. Oh, good, good. Well, uh, I guess here's your card. Oh, thank you. 
<laughs> and uh, oh. lovely, <laughs> and your present. Oh, uh, <laughs> open it. <laughs> They're really going to love this. Oh. Yes, uh, bet shows, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, what do you think of that? Eh? Where are you going to put it? I don't know. I'll think of somewhere. Oh, come on, let's have a drink. Yes, I think I need one. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Have you paid the tax that was due on January the 1st? Not yet, no. Can you do? Just about, if I don't pay the printers. Pay the tax man. He'll charge you interest if you don't. Now listen, Ken. I have to tell you that these days, if you split up with a missus, it costs you. I realise that. What she's asking, it doesn't suit you at all, not from a tax point of view. For a start, if you pay off the mortgage on the house, you lose all your relief there. I'm the one at fault, Rod, and I don't want to upset Deirdre any more than I already have. And if that's what she wants... How were you thinking of paying off the mortgage anyway? Not with your tax money, I hope. Well, I uh, thought I could go to the bank about upping the loan I've already got on the recorder. With interest rates like they are, you'd never be able to make the payments. To be frank, I doubt if the bank would lend you any more anyway, in view of the way your advertising's dropped. The Gazette free sheets knocked a hell of a hole in your operation. Well, I've, uh, I've had a bit of a shot in the arm on the advertising front. But the council are going to put their advertising my way. You know, Ken, I hate to say this, but the Gazette's bound to see you off in the long run. They've got deeper pockets than you. They can afford to run at a loss. I don't think the Gazette management are quite as confident as you imagine. They tried to buy me out this week. Did they not? I said no. That was a pity. I have to say, Ken, as a pal, I hope, as well as your accountant, my advice is sell. Oh, come on, Rod. It's my livelihood. I mean, if I sell, I lose my job and my salary, as well as my only real asset. A wasting asset, Ken. It's worth something now, but in a year, two at the most, you won't be able to give it away. If the Gazette are still willing to buy you out, you'd be a fool to turn them down. Well, it's a shame you've got to leave already, Alex. Well, I dare say we could stay a bit longer. Eh? No, no, it's the staff, you see, Tom. Tim? Pardon? Oh, <laughs> right. <laughs> no, we, we've got to get back to make sure that the staff are coping. The beggars for letting the log fires go out if you don't watch them. Yes. Uh, well, I don't know where Sandra's got to uh, again. She's probably in the kitchen. Oh, you've got a grand girl there, you know. Yes, I do know that, Alex. Uh, don't worry. Anyway, glad you could make it. You really must come and see us again sometime. Oh, we will, we will. Don't, we? don't you worry. Now we know the way. Yeah, you go back inside, Tom. Look after your other guests. Right. Okay, then. Bye. <laughs> Bye. 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 Just get me home. I don't know what we're rushing off for. I know you don't. Went off very well, I thought. Yeah. I mean, it could have been very tricky. God help us. And don't think I didn't notice you calling Tim Tom. Because I know you, and that was deliberate, and I thought that was rather petty. Well, he shouldn't have kept calling you Alex. And you should have told him. Oh! Well, I've done it again! Oh! Oh! What you doing, woman? Get me home! I was just about to lock up and go home. Now we can go home together. Yes. No. Let's go to the wine bar for a drink. And then we'll go out for dinner somewhere nice. Can we afford it? We're doing it whether we can or not. Right. We'll throw caution to the winds. Anyway, I think we can afford it. While you were out, I sold two more adverts, including a half page to the Weatherfield Building Society. You're very keen, aren't you? Well, of course I am. I love it, Ken, working together. I don't care how difficult it is, I think it's great. It's our future and I love it. Come on, you can take me for that drink.
So you had a good time then? Oh, marvellous. Marvellous. That house is a show place, isn't it, Beth? Nice house. And how did Sandra like a present? Oh, she fell in love with it as soon as she saw it. She didn't know where to hang it, but she said she'd sleep on it, you know, try and work out where it would look best. Well, it sounds like a very successful expedition oh, to me. First of many, Tina. <laughs> you know, Tim, our Sandra's husband, mm -hmm. made it quite clear we were welcome any time. Any time. I'm just going to get this lot off and put some hotels on. Thanks for holding the fort, love. It's a pleasure. Do you know, it's a different world, Tina. Different world. There you go, mate. Hello, <coughs> oh, Tom. Hey, hi, Jack. How are you, sir? Oh, tell very much. OK, I hope you don't mind me saying so, but your young lady over there has got a look on her face. I've seen a few times on Albira. A woman bursting for the round. Don't worry, son, I can cope. We'll still be friends by bedtime. Oh, don't tell me how to do it. The last thing I want is our fear of feeling friendly at bedtime. <laughs> yes, ladies, what is your pleasure? Don't make me blush. <laughs> Gin and tonic, please, Jack. Gin and tonic. Uh, I'll have a gin and tonic. Uh, yeah, two gin, please. Two gin, Now, these are on me. I feel like... You know, I don't know what I'm doing in here. By rights, I should not be speaking to you. We must have missed each other by seconds at least. Yes, but I was waiting for you for half an hour. Then we must have got our wires crossed what time we were meeting. I sat here for an hour watching that door waiting yes, for you. Yes, but it's different for men. I know. It's a good arrangement. Mm -hmm. oh. Sure. Everything all right, Jack? Oh, yes, yes, I like that. Not exactly the country set, is it? Don't see many people in here in green wellies, do you? I should hope not. You know why they wear green wellies, don't they? So they blend in with the grass when they're creeping up to the sheep. Well, at least you can get back to work, Ivy. I mean, that's the main thing. I've got to get car repaired first. That's where he is now. He's got a pal of his sorting it out so he can get it back up real quick. Well, it's nice of the police mm. to let him have it back. Nice. Don't heard you say that. He could blame him, man. I know it's a shame about the bar, as I remember when my marriage broke up. I mean, I know how dear you must be feeling. You, were, you went through it yourself, didn't you? Well, in my opinion, she's better off without him. I never had any time for Kim Barley. Oh, no, but I mean, you've got to feel sorry for dear Dream. She should have given him the push years ago. Come on, lovey, it's your favourite. Look, even if you're not very hungry, you must try and eat something. Oh, Mum. Oh, love. I know, I know. Stay with us here on Plus for more soap drama after the break. And on Saturday, don't forget that we've back-to-back -back episodes of Magnum. It's a non-stop Saturday from 12 noon here on Plus. Mm -hmm.